Hello everyone, welcome back to another informative video. In this video we are going to talk about Irish potato. Yes, I know I have done a video already. As a matter of fact, I have done a, a few videos on Irish potato production. Well, different aspects of Irish, Irish potato production. And the family uh, is the Solanese family, right? And within that family, it's not only Irish potato alone. You have other plants are um that that are related to Irish potato such as um tomato, peppers, tobacco. So all of these plants are essentially come from the same family which is Solanese. Right? And what I should also tell you is that these potatoes that you're looking at here, you are seeing a like this is out a purple, a reddish burgundy colour, brown. Right? These are like the, the basic um colours that exist out there with Irish potato. However, there are many, many varieties, right? There are many varieties, and um, in Jamaica, you will, you will, you will hear me referencing Jamaica um, a lot throughout this presentation. But most of the information is basically general that can be applied um, right across the board in in any country. Um, once you take environmental factors into concern, so in Jamaica. The, the one of the the more um, common variety is called spunta right and the spunta looks like this one this brown color one now let us let us talk about side selection because in order to grow Irish potato you need to have a proper area that you are going to grow the the, the potato now when we say side selection what do we mean don't select a waterlog area right a waterlog area is basically a recipe for a disaster when you talk about water logging you're, talk, you're talking about the plant eventually dying from um, not getting enough oxygen they're not taking up, taking up enough nutrients a lot of um, disease issues fungal and bacterial and so on and that will basically come together and, and, and cause you know problems with the Irish potatoes so you don't want to select a water log here next avoid growing on lands that previously grow other Solanaceae crops. So remember the earlier I told you about the other plants that are related to, to Irish potato like the tobacco, the tomato and so on. You don't want to rotate um, Irish potato with those crops because the same disease that affect Irish potato or tomato and so on, bell peppers, they'll affect the Irish potato also. So if previously you, you, were, you, you planted tomato and you had a disease problem, if you go and plant your Irish potato there, you'll surely have um, those disease resurfacing and, and giving um, your Irish potato a warm time in terms of um, negative effects causing disease in your Irish potato and so on. Um, areas that are flat and on a slight slope is preferred. Sunlight. Sunlight is important. We, we, the sunlight is like the, 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 one of the basic necessities for uh, plant growth and development in terms of photosynthesis. So that is a given. So that is basically side selection, right? Um, let us move on. Uh, when to plant Irish potato? Now, you want to plant Irish potato in the cooler seasons of the year. When we will talk about cooler seasons, we are talking about um, autumn, winter and spring. Now, winter time is basically like the prime time, right? Especially in the Caribbean, because in Caribbean we, we get so hot when the winter comes. Um, you know, sometimes it doesn't even make much difference, but it is it is it, it it is cooler, right? It is cooler. So you find that a lot of farmers will plant Irish potato round about um, you know winter time. However, uh, you can start in in autumn, right? So you can start like September, September, October. There about you can start planting because during that part of autumn you find that temperatures start start going down so you definitely can start planting Irish potato starting um, the middle of, of autumn right going through winter and also the, 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 the spring the first part of spring right because as you know when we leave spring we're going in, in we, we're going into um, summer so uh, that first part of spring you can definitely um, follow through to that to that um, stage right so this question can I plant Irish potato year-round I would say yes 
right? I would say yes. But when I say yes, it is relative to, 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 to some other things. So you may get lower yields, right? Because as I said, the Irish potato prefer cooler times, cooler temperatures, um, cooler, cooler atmospheric temperature, cooler root zone temperature, right? Obviously, when the time is very hot, you will have um, more higher temperatures, uh, atmospheric temperatures, and obviously, you'll have higher root zone temperatures as well but if you can and and if you if you if you choose not to do anything you like grow the potato as is with those um normal um hot times that we don't recommend you plant the Irish potato if, if you still go ahead and plant it you will still get potatoes growing but it's just that your heel might be will well will be lower right but um if you if you have proper irrigation proper watering right and 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 you you implement certain certain good um, agriculture practices or cultural practices such as mulching you will find that you can get a bit more right so putting these things in place you definitely can grow um irish potato all year round but it's just that some seasons you'll get better yield um than others right um you also need to to consider planting drought, drought tolerant crops um and just rotate so like in the cooler seasons you can go to to certain variety and in the warmer seasons you could go to your drought tolerant um um irish potato now let us move on to land preparation now land preparation is obviously a very key um aspect of irish potato production now when we talk about uh, land preparation we are talking about clearing the land plowing um harrowing and farrowing right so when we say clear the land we are talking about removing a large trees that might be blocking sunlight and any other anything else that might be you know blocking the um, proper plowing of the land now let us talk about plowing now plowing is when you have cleared the land and you go in with your tractor now and you basically um till the soil right you basically um dig the soil then uh, to turn to turn to turn the soil and what I would say after you've cleared the land right you want to add some animal manure to the land before you plow it right animal manure will will, will add great benefits to your land for Irish potato right especially if you have chicken manure right chicken manure is high uh, in nitrogen content um, and you know when you sprinkle the animal manure on the on the land when it is cleared you basically plow it into the soil right you plow it into the soil and it will be able to um be rotivated into into the into the soil where the roots will be now when you are plowing you want to plow at least at least one feet 30 centimeter down right and then after you've plowed right you want to do harrowing now harrowing is just uh, what what would what would break up those plowed soil soil particles into smaller refined pieces, right? Because we don't want to, the potato to be to be to be growing in 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 large lumps of 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 um, soil particles. We want it to be growing in a nice refined um, soil, right? And after you've harrowed it and break it up in the, in that nice small refined um, soil you are going to now furrow it and this is a picture on the left here that 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 um, shows you what um, if the furrows should be like so this is basically a region furrow so in here is basically the furrow and on top here is basically the ridge right uh, so this is how you would want to to prepare the land ideally I know some of us might not have the the resource to do this but even if you are using machete and, and, and fork, you can create these kind of um, um, ridge and furrow with hoe and these kind of things. The whole aim of land preparation is to ideally get a, 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 a nice soil tilt. What do I mean by soil tilt? What I mean is you want the soil to be of a, a good physical characteristics. Um, refine enough where the potatoes will have will not have any or um what I would say restriction or obstruction in 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 developing their tubers. You want to ensure that you're having good airflow. You want to ensure that you're having good water drainage, good water holding capacity as well. 
So the soil tilt is basically the whole um, physical condition of the soil, right? Um, as you can see here with this one here that, I, that you are seeing on the screen, it is, it is well prepared. You can see that the soil particles are very fine and it, and, and it was well prepared. Now, as it relates to furrowing, the, the, the furrowing has a distance, right? Um, to make the furrows. So, well, a measurement to make the furrows. So, uh, in here, in the furrows, from furrow to furrow, you want it to be three feet. Now, selecting and preparing seeds. I know I've touched on this in, in previous videos, but I, do, I just want to include it in this presentation to give you a, 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 like a, 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 a holistic um, understanding one time. Right? Now, in selecting and preparing seeds, you want to, first of all, buy good seeds from certified dealers. And as far as we know, our certified dealers, and for those of you who are just going into Irish potato production, don't be a stranger. Talk to other farmers who you know have experience and they'll, they'll, they'll hopefully guide you into like where to buy the seeds and, or even share their seeds with you still. So, I buy from certified dealers. I cannot stress that, um, enough. Ideal seed weight, seed weight should be 60 to 90 gram or 2 to 3 ounces. Cut seeds if the seeds are too large and treat after. So, um, normally they sell small seeds and they sell big seeds if you buy small seeds um, you want to get them ideally um, 60 to 90 gram or 2 to 3 ounces right uh, that you know and you basically plant those and if you get larger seeds you basically want to cut them right cut them into obviously 2 to 3 ounces or 60 to 90 gram pieces and after you've cut them you want to also treat them so you want to dip them in a fungicide solution to prevent any fungal issues right um, yes you can also you can also um, use a copper base right use a copper base um, fungicide which will also take care of any bacterial issues so when you buy your seeds you can you can obviously leave them to sprout and then you plant them or you can plant them without before they start sprouting but as I said in previous videos about this is that when you leave them to sprout, you basically know, you know, um, that whatever you're planting in your field is, is as, as sprouted and should grow more than planting seeds. And then when you go, you see a lot of spaces and you find that some of them get rotten and you end up having, like fall behind, you end up having to go and get more seeds to, to, to re, re, um, distribute, uh, in the field. So now we are ready to plant. So we have, basically prepare the land we have um, prepared select and prepare the seeds now we are ready to plant right now this is our reference plot on the left right it is it is the land is cleared um the it is it, it is it is plowed um animal manure is plowed into it it is harrowed and it is furrowed and it is furrowed to the the um three feet in between furrows Right, so now um, we are going to be planting the Irish potato 12 inches along the row. So that is one Irish potato there. Um, another one here. Those are Irish potatoes. And basically, in between this area, right, in between this area, it is 12 inches now across the ridge right across the ridge is basically 36 inches or 3 feet now how do you fertilize now we have planted the Irish potato how do you fertilize the Irish potato Basically, you have two options, right? Option one, place the fertilizer into the furrow before planting. Then cover with at least two inches of soil, then place potato on top of the soil. Option two, you can plant potato seeds. As soon as protein starts, place the fertilizer in a, in a full circle or half circle pattern around the plants. So what do I mean by this? So, normally, 
forget fertilizing. So when you prepare the land, the farmers are there, you go out, you plant the potato seeds, right? When you plant the potato seeds, you cover them slightly, and as soon as you start, see, you start seeing sprout, sprout start to come up. Then you go in and you, you, you circle bond, right? Or put a, a full circle of fertilizer. And what I mean by that is putting the fertilizer around the, 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 the base of the plant, right? Roughly about 6 to 8 inches away from the chunk or the stem, right? Because you don't want to burn the roots or burn the stem. About 6 to 8 inches away from the the, 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 the stem. Now let me see if I can draw a representation um, of it for you. Right? Now um, I'm going to draw it right here. So here is the, 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 the stem. Um, right? That's the that's a few leaves. Right? And of course you have the roots right here. Right? And then you have the soil level or line there. So what you want to do is roughly about say six to eight inches from the trunk right here. You want to do a circle bun, right? Now obviously this is not 3D, right? So um, this bun would actually go right around, right? It will go right around. Um, yeah, it will go right around. So it, it will be something like this, right? Uh, let me see if I can turn it into 3D. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that is full circle. And you do full circle when you are on flatlands, right? Um, but if you are on a sloping land, right? For example, you have another plant, right? So for example, you have another plant, um, and it, it, it's on a hill, a sloping, you just basically do a half circle. So the idea behind this is, when the, when, when, when the water is coming from this angle, coming down off the hill, it will basically wash the fertilizer from here and wash it down into the, wash it down into the, this is the root zone. Wash, wash the fertilizer down into the root zone right here. However, if you had put the fertilizer on this side here, on this half, you find out when the water is coming, um, or when you irrigate, the irrigate, the water will basically wash the fertilizer away from the root coming somewhere down here and the roots will not, um, get the chance to take up the nutrients. So whenever you are fertilizing, think about how the land is situated if the land is flat or gently sloping you can afford to do a full circle right if it is on a slope you put the the fertilizer on the the, the sloping part of the land so that when the, you irrigate it, it it basically flows down into the root right um so that is basically how you would you would fertilize the irish potato right it's like fertilizing it before Putting the fertilizer in the furrow before you, before you are at planting, right? That's the first option. Or do it after you've planted and the potato have sprouted. Now, I know you are saying, okay then, yes, this is how I fertilize, but what type of fertilizer? And this is basically going to answer um, a question that one of the subscribers asked. So I hope you are basically watching the video and, and going through and, and looking... Um, following the entire presentation right because i'm trying to do everything in 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 harder right no type of fertilizer no obviously of in with the irish potato you have vegetative uh, growth and you have generative growth now um with irish potato the vegetative growth will normally start at um emergence of sprout to to about four to six weeks there about you will have vegetative growth um extending to now what kind of fertilizer do you need when a plant is in its vegetative stage uh, you need a fertilizer comprising of nitrogen phosphorus potassium magnesium calcium um, 
sulfur and micronutrients. So what I'm saying here is that you need a fertilizer or a nutrient recipe that essentially combines all the different um, plant nutrients. Right? The, 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 the plant in its vegetative stage need all the nutrients, all the different nutrients it need it 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 it, 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 it su it's supposed to get. Now obviously um with the vegetative growth you will have the plant taking up more of some nutrients than others. So those nutrients that it takes more of we we call them the um primary and secondary macronutrients. What are the primary macronutri macronutrients? Um, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. What are the secondary macronutrients? You have calcium, sulfur, and magnesium. Those are secondary macronutrients. So as you can see, what I've, what I've stated here is, um, and these grade fertilizer, these are basically, um, fertilizer that, that, that are uh, first and basically manufacture. That's for, that is the first and company in Jamaica. They basically manufacture these. But, um, right across the world, US, um, other countries, um other places in the Caribbean um you will have grade fertilizer that you can use that basically um has have the same representation right so you just have to just look into the information that I'm presenting and just find the best uh, the most suitable fertilizer that matches what I'm saying to you now what I've stated here is um this 1428 14 plus sulfur is a very common fertilizer in Jamaica all the farmers use it right so this is saying 14% nitrogen, 28% um, phosphorus, 14% potassium plus sulfur, right? Now, um, the plant will use a lot of nitrogen and it will use a lot of um, phosphorus, it will use a lot of um, um, magnesium, right? And it will use, it will not use much potassium but it will use some amount as well. Right, but the major nutrients that the plant will use in its in its vegetative stage is um, nitrogen, phosphorus, magnesium. Right, it will use sulfur. Right, um, and then this is so because um, the plant needs nitrogen to help. Uh, I don't want to get too technical here. I don't. I want to keep this presentation as basic as possible. So it needs nitrogen to deal with um, to to make um, amino acids to build proteins. Right, um, magnesium is a, is basically a part of uh, the chlorophyll structure. So if you don't have magnesium, you're definitely going to have um, yellowing. Right, um, you need phosphorus to basically help to develop the rooting system of the plant initially. So when it's in its vegetative stage, that is when you want to help to boost um, root development because that is ultimately where you're going to determine how many tubers you get and so on. And of course, potassium is there. To, to kind of trigger those um, biochemical enzymatic processes to help um, translocate um, different assimilates to different parts of a plant, right? And um, now, as you can see here too, you, you will see trace minerals here, right? Trace minerals, those are basically your boron, um, your zinc, your high and those things. So you might not be able to you, you might not be able to find those in granular farms. If you can, that's good. But if not, you find that you might have to um, do foliar feeding for, for for some of them. Even some of the macronutrients um, like like magnesium. Um, if you can't find it in granular farm, you can get something like a Calmag, which is a foliar spray or um, just foliar sprays that have in these other um nutrient elements that you, you you might not be able to find in a in a granular farm so whatever you can find in a granular farm supplement uh, give it to the plant via foliar right so what it doesn't get through the roots it gets it gets through the leaves but you don't want to burden what it is getting through the leaves you want to you, you want to have a proper base um fertilizer granular fertilizer going to the roots and then you top off everything by supplementing the micronutrients and, and others through the leaves, right? So, um, I know maybe it, it, it might be hard to really balance out these, or you might not be able to find all of them, but the more you can get a whole of and, and put together, the better the production will be, right? Now, in, gen sorry, in the generative growth now, it is going to be slightly different from vegetative growth because the plant is basically trans as transition into start um, developing tubers now 
it's not in its vegetative stage again where it is developing stems, thickening stems, um, putting on leaves. No, it basically slow down that part and start producing tubers now. So basically the plant will focus its energy to tuber development. Right, so now in, in, in generative growth, you want to have a fertilizer that is iron potassium. Right, now why we say iron potassium? Potassium basically helps, and I said this earlier, it helps to basically um, um, help the plant to, to focus or to send its, 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 its assimilates um, to the, the tubers. Right. Uh, so that is why in the degenerative stage you're basically going to have um, the Irish potato having needing higher levels of, of potassium right the potassium is good for um, the storage organs which would be the, 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 the tuber the tubers right and as I said it is good for overall enzymatic reactions that is basically needed to basically transport are, are translocate those sugars and sending them to the tubers so if you don't have enough potassium when the Irish potatoes are, are, are developing their tubers you're basically going to have very small tubers and you know they're not going to be big and their yield is going to be low so you want to ensure that as soon as the plant starts its generative mode like for example at around about six weeks um, five six weeks there about you want to change over to a fertilizer um, that is iron potassium and this is what I, rec I recommend right based on what um, is available these are available in Jamaica basically um, this is 15.535 plus sulfur again is a, a first and um, fertilizer grade right that many farmers use with different crops so this is saying 15% nitrogen 5 phosphorus 35 potassium plus sulfur so as you can see the potassium um, level is very high here right and this fertilizer is actually a very good um, finishing fertilizer as it relates to what is required in the generative stage right and this is basically going to be supplemented with magnesium sulfate calcium nitrate and trace minerals right and as you can see the ma magnesium sulfate basically has the magnesium and sulfur which are two um, secondary macronutrients the calcium nitrate basically has calcium which is basically one of the um, secondary macronutrients as well and then we still have some nitrogen from the nitrate uh, right so it's, and then the trace mineral will have in all your trace elements so it's like it's not like you are going to be using one like for example in the vegetative stage you just use 14.28.14 and in the generative stage you use 15.535 no that's not going to give you proper yield you'll get something but it's not going to give you the best yield that you can get right you want to when you're in generative growth you want to ensure that you mix all the different fertilizers together that the plant needs however you find that it's just some of the different some of the elements the nutrient elements you will basically increase such as the the, the potassium right and you want to also give good amounts of magnesium because as I said magnesium is critical because it's a part of the, the chlorophyll structure so you want the plant to be constantly um, chopping that sunlight and creating um, um, converting that energy and creating that sugar that the tubers need so you want to ensure that you have a balanced recipe still so for those of you who find that previous slide very technical and you don't want to go through all these this um, you know putting this with that and fixing this you know these kind of technical things uh new first and jamaica limited um as i said they are from jamaica they manufacture fertilizer first and um they basically have this line of fertilizer for the potato which they call the potato lizer i've heard you i know you've heard me talking about this before this is basically a formulation that is um that caribbean farmers use jamaican farmers use right um now it is called a potato lizer starter and the potato lizer finisher right um the potato lizer starter I use it in the vegetative stage that i was explaining earlier right which is the vegetative stage this one and the 
finisher, you basically use it in the generative stage when the potato is putting is is um sending out tubers, right? Now what I need to mention to you is that um you need to do a soil test before if you if you are if you plan to um be very serious about your Irish potato nutrition, you need to do a soil test first to know what is in the soil so you know what to supplement with, right? Because you'll find that okay then you have good amount of nitrogen, so you don't need to add much nitrogen. Now, potato cultural practices. So, after you've planted, you fertilize the potato is growing. Obviously, you need to maintain the potato plants, right? So, you need to keep the potato feel, um, feel weed free, right? You don't want to be harboring any weeds that can um, harbor insects and ultimately the insect issues, disease issues, and so on. Um, more money you'll spend cleaning out the field and so on. So you want to mold the potato two to three weeks and continue as needed, as needs be to prevent potato tubers from developing greening. So when you plant the potato, after two to three weeks, you find that the potato start getting taller, it start getting bulkier, and it needs more support um, where um, root anchorage is concerned because the wind will be blowing it. So you want to mold the potato now, right? You want to mold it to, to create, help create that anchorage that the plant needs. And obviously, when you mold a plant, is going into um, generative go, is going to go into generative mode soon. So, so that 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 mold that you mold would have helped to protect you against um, any 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 um, occurrence of greening. Now, greening is basically when the t potato tubers yeah, is exposed to the the, the 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 sunlight, the radiation from the sun. And the radiation from the sun directly hitting the tubers will kind of trigger more like a, a physiological um, um, activity or process within the potato which causes it to get green. Now when it gets green, I mean, all of us know what a potato should look like. If we see a green potato or a potato, part of it is brown and part is green, we might not want to buy it. So it reduces the marketability of the potato itself. So you want to ensure that you cover the, the, the potato and, and mound, mound, right, or mold the potato as needs be so that you don't have any potato the, the potatoes exposed to direct radiation from the sun, right? Now, yeah, so this as molding, um, er, molding early provides early, an, um, early anchorage and soil resource our plants, right? So I didn't mention the soil resource. So when you mold the plant, obviously you are putting more soil around the plant which has more microorganisms which will act on um, um, soil matter um, and then release more nutrients and so on so you're actually packing on more resource there for the roots to use right let us move on now disease affecting Irish potato this will basically um, tackle the, the question that the subscriber has he asks about um, the potato of some like little scabs or, or I, I don't remember but what I've looked at is that I basically compared what he was saying to potato scab and um, these are basically some of the more common um, disease that affect uh, potato. We have late blight, early blight, those are like the top ones up there, right? When you hear a farmer say, oh, in potato bundong, is some kind of blight he's talking about, right? And both bl blight are basically um, fungal pathogen, but there are different pathogen. The late blight is basically um, Phytopter infestans. Early blight is Altanera solani. The potato scab is a bacterial pathogen, right? Um, Streptomyces cabes. And then you have black leg. Um, black leg. You have a lot of different pathogens that can cause black leg, right? And black leg is it, 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 it is um, basically. What, what the name states, the, 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 um, the crown part of a plant there, uh, right at the base of the stem, you find that it start getting dark and then, um, it is a fungal disease and then the plant will just topple over, more like a, more like a damping off effect, right? Now, let us talk about the potato scab because the potato scab is basically, um, this was a direct question. Now to you, um, the subscriber that asked about that, that, that said, the potato looked, it just didn't look good. It had a lot of um, like um, scale stuff on it and so on. It is actually potato scab and it is a very common bacterial um, disease 
that affects potato all over the world. So this pathogen is basically spread through um, water, right? Um, wind blowing the soil, and it can basically be from seed as well. So what you want to do is when you are before you plant your potato seeds, you can basically, as I said, treat them, treat them with a copper based fungicide um, that will basically help with um, bacterial infections and fungal infections, right? Now, if you already establish the crop, what you want to do is basically go through with um, uh, you know the same fungicide and you want to do like a soil drench right um, where you basically instead of spraying the plants you basically um, wet the soil um, around the root zone area where the tubers are developing and apply the, the, the fungicide in that manner right now late bite and early bite you just need just 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 look um, just go to your farm store and look for a fungicide that can protect protect against late blight and early blight right um, and yeah so those are basically the common common um, disease there are, there are a few more there are a few more that uh, well uh, well not a few but a lot more that affect um, potato but these are more common and I especially want to talk about the scab so so the subscriber please do some research on potato scab and you will understand what I'm saying and you will basically see that this um, it should be what you are talking about right so I've covered that now harvesting now the potato the potato is ready to harvest right but um, how do you know when it's ready right there are so many things out there that that you can that is suggested or that is being practiced right so First of all, one of the first things you want to do is you want to know the variety and you want to know the maturation date. So you want to know, okay, then this variety basically takes, um, so for example, um, for example, in Jamaica with this Punta variety, it takes 90 to 100 days. So okay, then you know that it takes 90 to 100 days. So um, there is no way you should, be, you, you should be passing 100 days. At 100 days, it should be mature because that is the maturation date for, for, for the potato. Right, so you want to check the maturation date. Now, another way, another method is check the soil for cracking. Because obviously, you plant a Irish potato, the seed is there, um, small, it develops tubers, and the tubers continue and get large. So obviously, it gets large, it's going to um, force the soil outward, so it's going to cr um, maybe crack open the soil. So you look for any cracking of the soil. When you see any cracking of the soil, you basically um, will, have, will kind of have an idea that, okay, then potato tubers are developing. Now look out for flowers. Um, Irish potato do produce flowers, and we all know that flowers flowers are a sign that the plant is basically coming to the end of its reproductive cycle because it it it, it, it produces flowers, and it, it goes through pollination, it produces seeds, and then then it falls, and then that's the end. So as soon as you see flowers, that is that is not to say that the, the potato is ready. As soon as you see flowers, it's an indication that the potato tubers are starting to develop leaves in essence and ultimately dry down. So leaves in essence is where the plants produce, the, the, the Irish potato produce flowers and the flowers get mature and they start to fall off and, um, and the leaves start drying up because guess what? They have done what they're supposed to do. They have sent their resources to, 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 um, production of the flowers and development and so on so they start to fall off and the plants start to dry down as soon as you see the plants start to dry down you basically um, just kind of coincide all of these things or match all of these things to the maturation date so you say okay then we are at 90 days we are 80 to 90 days now the plants looking like they're drying down I'm, I'm kind of within the ballpark Right, so it it, it, it it seems like the plant the, the potatoes are getting ready. So all of the points that I'm telling you about, you need to basically put them together and, and work them together holistically, right? And and then you will get more accuracy as to when to reap the potato. Right? Um another thing is very simple, dig into the soil and test the potato. Right? When you dig into the soil, you'll basically actually feel the size of the potato. And you can basically just graduate away some of the soil and you can rub um, the skin of the potato. If the skin rubs off easily, it needs to stay there and, and develop some more. 
right? Um, because it's not fully materialized yet. These are basically some of the, 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 the tips and tricks that you can use to, to know whether or not your Irish potato is ready, right? Yeah, this is it. So we have gone through basically everything that you need to know. We spoke about land preparation and um, we spoke about uh, seed selection and prepar preparation. We talk about fertilization. We talk about um, disease issues. We talk about um, harvesting. I hope you followed right through the presentation because it's very valuable information contained within and I'll see you again in another video.